Hello and warmest of Septandi greetings to you and yours. In the spirit of the season, I have decided to go back in time to when I was in high school. Back then, I loved writing games and I wrote them all in basic. And they were slow. And at about the same time, one of the hottest games in the arcade was Moon Patrol. Everything was moving around, the background was moving, the enemies, the car. It was an exciting game and I thought, boy, wouldn't it be cool if I could make that? So I started to learn assembly language and I read through William Barton Jr.'s book and I started on my Moon Patrol game and I never finished it. So in this series, what we're going to do is I'm going to go back and look at the state that I left things in, figure out how I solved problems, how I made things work or not work. Maybe find some bugs, maybe fix some bugs. In this first part, I'm going to take a look at the files that I left for myself and try to figure out what do they do and which are the old ones and which are the new ones and see if I can make sense of what I have and then come up with a set of files that would represent the best most latest version that I ended up with. Let's go. I went digging through my paper archive and I found a large printout of all the assembly code I had written up to a certain point. I don't know if this was the latest version of the code or just some snapshot at some point in time. And this is my attempt at artwork for one of the screens. Uh, I've never, ever, ever been good at drawing, so I imagine this probably took me a very, very, very long time to make. I was really surprised to come across this. Apparently, I had read somewhere how to get random numbers when you're in assembly language, and this ended up being what I, I guess, rediscovered just like a couple months ago. If you've been watching all my videos, you probably remember I had a series on the floating point accumulators and getting random numbers by using the ROM routines. This is like kind of a subset of doing that. This would just run the random number generator against whatever happened to be in the floating point accumulator, and then I, I wrote down where to peek to get as many bytes of an answer as I wanted. So here's one of the main disks that I have with all of the source. And I think some of this is also from other projects, like Dig Dug has nothing to do with this. And it's a little confusing, and it certainly doesn't help that they're all stuck in a disk. So I'm gonna use a command that will extract them into individual files so I can load them up into like Visual Studio Code or Notepad. So the desave command is kind of like a bulk operation on a directory. Uh, and so what I can do is I can say go into the entire disk and extract everything into their own file and this will generate a bunch of copy commands and execute those DECB copy commands for me. This dash E says do it, actually do the extraction. Just as an aside, I'm using the latest snapshot build of Toolshed as of the time I'm recording this because the publicly released build of 2.2 has a bug on Windows where the dsafe command uses the wrong delimiters and then the copy commands will fail. So if you want to use this command, I recommend using the latest snapshot build, unless by the time you see this, something after 2.2 has been released. If I don't do the dash E, it'll just tell me what it would do. And so the easiest thing is to add the dash E and to extract them. But there's a problem, because I want the basic files to be extracted without the tokens. I need to detokenize them. So what I'm actually going to do is just rerun this, send it to a file, and then edit it. So I'm just going to say this is my out, call that a batch file. So what I could do is for all the lines with basic in them, I can add 
dash T, dash A. Uh, I think that should be enough. So I also have this, I don't know what this is, T10. Also something a little worrisome. So I do have some binary files in here and doing a dash L, I'm not sure what that's gonna cause, if that's gonna change the bits. So to be on the safe side, I'm gonna remove the dash L from those. Okay, so this should be a batch file that'll do what I want. So let's run the batch file. Looks like it did stuff. I now have a whole bunch of files. Something else complicating this is that this isn't the only disk with stuff. So I also have a, a working two. I also have a working backup. Like I, I have to like compare all this stuff. So what I think I'm gonna do is extract them each into their own folders and do some win diffs. As an example of some of the comparisons and edits I'm making, I have a couple of files, blowup.source and blowup2.source, and if I try to compare them because of the line numbers that Ed Tasm forced on me, uh, you can't really compare them. So I've been going into VS Code and doing multi-cursor editing so I can get rid of all the line numbers. I can actually see what has changed. And I found something kind of funny. The mistake that I'm constantly making now, I also made back then. Figuring out the, when I need the pound sign, because I just keep forgetting that I need the pound sign when I'm doing immediate mode comparisons. Anyway, it's interesting to see what kinds of changes I made as I would go through iterations of the same code. One of the basic programs on the disk would do the initial drawing of the moon, of the backdrop, and then save that as an image to be used by the assembly language code. Look at that. Got a little car, got a little bumps on the road. We even have the earth up here, or at least my attempt to have a rendition of the earth. Let's compare that with the drawing. That's the the earth, these are the mountains. I wrote down the little colors there. That's gonna be my enemy. Here's my car, this is the ground. I guess I did a little extra flourishes to get bumps on the ground and to get little stripes there. It'll be fun to watch this moving.